Hey everybody, welcome to my playthrough of Final Fantasy Tactics A2 Grimoire of the Rift, which is the most horrible long-form word vomit name for a game ever. This is the sequel to the Game Boy Advanced version of Final Fantasy Tactics, which is kind of sort of related to the PlayStation 1 version of Final Fantasy Tactics, but not really. Now, uh, if you've been on my channel for a while, you've probably already seen me play Final Fantasy Tactics. And I did most of that game and about half the side questing. There is a lot of side questing. And like I said in that playthrough, uh, probably like three or four years ago whenever I did that. Now, when I got around to this game, it would be a very long playthrough. I plan on doing probably not 100% of the side questy stuff, but I'm gonna do almost all of it, and all of it's gonna be on screen. I'll probably be bringing guests in the playthrough later on, but these first few episodes are mostly gonna be teaching you the game if you haven't played it before. I've already got a list written down of what kind of class combinations I wanna make, and uh, should be good, so I'm actually really pumped to get playing this again. So let's get started. Alright, so, the official naming of the character, uh, the character's official name, as you can see there, is Luso. However, I think I want to rename it. So I'm actually playing this, uh, with a PlayStation 4 controller <laughs> right now. Uh, I don't have one of those fancy DS capture card things, uh, but I think I can make this work just fine. Uh, the buttons are mapped up improperly, though, and I don't entirely know why, but I'm sure I'll survive for now. There we go, just fixed up the controls, okay. Uh, oh wait, can you do lowercase? I'm stupid, lowercase is right at the bottom there. And can I do dashes? Do they have symbols in this? They do not have the one I'm looking for. All right, I'll survive. Unless my name, ooh, my name doesn't fit. All right, MDB it is. And, uh, done. Are summer book reports something that people commonly get? I never used to get that back in school. Uh, the summer moon, oh right. I forgot about this. I used to know what all these things correlated to, but I don't know anymore. So I'll actually let you know later in this video. I'll, I'll look it up or something. So uh, I'll answer truthfully. The summer I'm gonna play video games nonstop. Yep, that's what I always did. Personal goal, I want to uh, be able to swim half a mile. Well, I still can't swim. Foreign language, I still don't know any languages but English. Uh, get warrior to level 75, that's me. Next year, I promise not to misbehave in class. Oversleep in the morning, let my dog eat my homework. Well, I never had a dog and I never really misbehaved in class. I didn't really oversleep in the morning either, but that was more me than anything. You sneaky bitch. Now, I get it's to add some texture, but I find it infuriating that the pieces of cloth on the touchscreen right now are not flattened out properly. I'm probably the only one who cares. God, I love the art style of this game. I think it was made by the same people who did uh, Tactics Ogre on Game Boy Advanced as well, which was also a fantastic game. Thank you. 
Now, I will point out, yes, this is a video game, however, uh, I guess this is a country-specific thing, perhaps even provincial, but teacher can't actually keep you after school. If you walk out, there's nothing they can really do about it. Not legally, at least. I mean, they can't legally hold you in the school after school hours. If it's like a private school, then maybe they could try and get you kicked out if you were to walk out on them. But really, if your parents were fighters who would put up a fuss, there ain't shit they can do. But maybe that's just here in Ontario, Canada, where everything's a paradise, where you can just walk out at the end of the school when you're supposed to leave. Or you could always have hard-ass parents. I wonder what summer vacation is like for teachers. I'm sure I've got at least one person in the fan base who's a teacher who can inform me. I wonder if they actually get, like, much of that time off, or if it's just filled with a lot of curriculum work. You know, prepping stuff for the next year. Well, I guess it depends on uh, how proactive of a teacher you are. I know some teachers write a lot of their own stuff and a lot don't. I always thought this was an interesting, interesting part of the uh, art style in some of these games. How uh, every room is like its own little world. Like, you can look through the, the edges of the walls of this room and it's just floating in... A weird patterned void. It's kind of cool looking. So, unlike uh, Final Fantasy Tactics for Game Boy Advance, I actually never beat this one. Uh, I don't think I even got past like a third of the way through because just so much to play and it's a very long game so far as I can tell. I mean, maybe if you blitz through the main story, you could do it pretty quick, but... I don't know. Now... <sighs> How dumb of a kid do you have to be to vandalize a library book with your own full first and last name? You think they're not going to figure out who did it? Especially when you've got a reputation. I just feel like that wasn't a wise move. Then again, I don't think our main character is wise. Oh god, that thing. I did think this was super cool my first time playing it, that we fought a whole new monster as the first fight. Well, I mean, it may have been in a Final Fantasy game, I'm just blanking on it. I mean, I, I can think of something in Final Fantasy um, 6 slash 3, whatever you will feel like naming it today, uh, that looks similar to this, but it's totally not this. Wow, don't be a racist. Man, that's gotta be inconvenient, having that, like, spike sticking out of the side of your jaw like that. How the fuck does he shave? I mean, I assume he grows facial hair on his chin as well. I mean, he does have a mustache and sideburns. How do you shave the spike thing?
Indentured servitude. Why have I not stepped away from- there we go. Now, I feel like I'm out of danger's way, and like I don't need to sign this contract with this stranger now, but I'll do it anyway. Where is the judge right now, actually? Oh, he hasn't been summoned yet. I haven't played this game in a few years. Oh, right, he doesn't ride a chocobo in this game, does he? In fact, I'm not entirely sure he has his own turn anymore in this game. Which, I mean, I'm not gonna complain about because the judge got in the way a few times on the previous one. There is literally no oath. I just say, I swear the oath, let me join. And then the audio bugs out really hard. Whoa! I'll, uh, I'll see if I can get that fixed in a second, guys. Jesus, all right, give me a second. Hey, I fixed it. It was actually really easy to fix. Let's get back to the game. You know, this is why I actually kind of like my main character in this. I'm not a big fan of uh, a lot of the main characters in modern Final Fantasy games, but I actually kind of like this kid. He's, he's a bit annoying, but he's not a total dink like they are in a lot of modern Final Fantasy games. You know, he's he's got some attitude and he, uh, he wants to work hard. I can appreciate that, even though I spent the beginning of the game telling him that he sleeps in, but whatever. God, I forgot the music in this game is actually really good. Oh, great. Right. He's named Sid. I forgot about that, because you always need your customary guy named Sid in Final Fantasy games. God, that music sounds great on headphones, actually. I, uh, I don't know if I ever bothered plugging in headphones on my DS. But, uh, sounds great like this. Forbidden ranged weapons, which I think is a preset one to always have forbidden on this because uh, none of your teammates have ranged weapons here, so that's kind of their way of just making sure that you don't get fucked over by uh, a bad rule in the tutorial. Yeah, standard uh, turn-based rules here of... Um just like in the previous game, instead of it going turn by turn, like one whole team, then the whole other team, it's, uh, everyone goes by their speed on what their turn is. In fact, if you look at the touch screen right now, you can see the turn order. It's the order from left to right of all of the people there. You can also see the little cards at the bottom. Blue are us, red are them. So, I think I can go through this tutorial a little bit quickly, because I think... You'd probably prefer if I just explain it as we go through. Okay, so we're just gonna move. Uh, I don't particularly want you to move anywhere, so I'm just gonna move you here. Yep. And uh, you can pick what direction you want to face at the end of a turn. You, of course, take more damage and are more likely to get hit from behind, whereas if you're attacked from the front, you're more likely to dodge it. So, in general, you want to attack from behind, but sometimes that puts you in a bad position, so... It's a judgment call you have to make. I think it's just an interesting little thing. Actions. Actions would be your abilities and your attacks. So I'm just gonna speed on through that. So this guy's a black mage. The game wants me to cast some of his black magic. Do a fire spell. Now what's the range on that? Okay. So I'll want to move a little bit closer first. I'll move right here, because Sid's kind of got me covered. I don't think the big guy moves. So, he's the only one I can catch with this, so I might as well just get him. So you can see there, 
Whoa, that Technicolor. Uh, hit chance is 99%, as you can see on the left, and it's gonna do about 28 points of damage, as you can see on the right. You can also see in the bottom left our portrait that says our level, our health, our MP. On the right, you can see his health, his MP, his level. So, just giving you the little rundown on that. Hey, the effect even loaded properly. Alright, um... I'm gonna do that just because I don't want my back exposed. So I put my back to this rock. Don't think it matters though because Sid's here, but I don't think I control Sid. Yeah, he's he just says I'm the one who decides what I do. So Sid's Sid's a guest in terms of the battle orders. He does his own thing. Now I believe Sid is a Benga, which is one of the races in this game. Which is interesting, because he looks fucking nothing like a Banga, but I bet you they explained it in-game. He's probably like a crossbreed Banga Hume. Hume being what they call humans. Yeah, Body Slam is, I believe, a warrior ability? A warrior is a, a standard melee class for Banga. Banga are very melee-centric in general. Uh, do I have any real abilities? No, I have no abilities right now. Well, I'm actually gonna just stand in right here where I'm probably gonna get attacked. Uh, move up a little. All right, I'm gonna stand right there where I'm probably gonna get attacked, uh, just to kind of bring them closer so I can take some swings at them and get some levels. But their speed is super low, so I'm, I might as well actually just move in. So, where I moved right now is not actually the best spot in the world. Um... Just because, with the way they're gonna move, if they're smart, they'll make it so I can't just hit them both with a fire spell. However, uh, are they smart enough to take advantage of that? I don't know. It might actually attack from in front, and if it attacks from in front, then it's stupid and opens itself up to uh, a double attack from a fire spell or any kind of black magic. So right now, I believe all we have to do is, yes, this is in the uh, touch screen at the top there, defeat uh, Calesta. Territorial marking. It's not gonna piss on me, is it? Apparently, ground pounds to mark its territory. Okay, the huge. So, oh, they are moving in weird ways, yeah. Well, I can almost guarantee that the other one's just going to move down a little bit and attack me from the side. Yep. So they've opened themselves up to a um, area attack. I've got some black magic they can do that. So this isn't the right there that they're weak against. Uh, I believe it's the water symbol is the, the bubbles. Kind of looks like a poison symbol if it were blue. Uh, can't reach with the white magic. Well, you know what? I'll move here then. Because I really don't care about her getting hit in this battle. I don't think any of us are going to get knocked down. I do care about her throwing a heal, though, because she'll get experience for doing it. And I want to level up my people. Oh, she's actually not gaining experience right now, is she? You know what? You probably don't get experience in the tutorial. And I'm just dumb and didn't notice. So I think he might actually have an area attack that hits this tile, but I don't particularly care. I uh, can't reach them both yet, so I'll just throw a fire spell there. And uh, I'm gonna knock one of these guys out anyway, and just see if I get anything out of it, because I actually don't remember. And I think Sid might actually end this battle before I get a chance to knock out both of these guys. Because Sid's hitting pretty hard, at least for this early in the game. And I don't think you actually need to knock this guy's health down to zero. Ooh, that's gonna hit hard. I think he just need to bring his health reasonably low when he leaves. If memory serves. So there are a lot of little niceties added, where it says like HP critical and stuff there, just to kind of keep you more informed of the battle. Having the second screen, because again, the first one of these, um, or not the first in the series or anything, but um, the, uh, the game that came right before this was on the Game Boy Advance where there was only one screen. So having the second screen here is actually quite nice because we can see things like uh, the turn order is really easy to check. We can see their weaknesses easily. It's just a lot of really useful bits of information. We always have a reminder right there of what the laws for the match are and our current objective. All right, let's drop a heal right there.
In general, I think this is probably a better game than uh, the previous one. I can't think of any major qualms I have with this one that I didn't already have with the first one. Even then, I didn't really have any major qualms with that one. Uh, I think in general, this is a really awesome series. It's a shame they make so few games in it. Yep, you're knocked out. All right, let's uh, let's take care of this. I should actually back off my black mage because he's getting pretty beaten up. Hey, I did get something out of it. You know what? Uh, I think I want to. He's got a double turn. Okay. You know what? I think I want to keep. Uh, keep fighting the small guys. Oh, don't tell me he's bailing now. Oh, God. <laughs> I thought I'd had to do more damage to him than that. Crap. Could have gotten another item. That wasn't so bad. Sid got killed, but... All right. Hey, we did get experience. You know what? You get the experience after the fight. I'm just stupid and didn't remember that, I guess. Longbow. Yeah, you get little bonuses for obeying all the laws. It's just an extra incentive not to break them, because if you if you break them, you get like yellow carded and red carded and stuff, which gives you little detriments you can pay off in jail time. But you also get the law bonus for not breaking any laws, which is nice. Uh, sometimes it's good, but sometimes it's mediocre. You know, it's kind of weird that my guy is so gung-ho about this whole thing, but at the same time, I kind of like that. They always uh, have such a hard time in games trying to explain why the main character is adapting to the situation they're put in so fast. I'm just kind of happy to have a not very realistic game for once where they can just, you know, have fun with the idea and jump right in. I like it. Game, you're making me hungry. All right. So I've already got a little list I wrote down of all the different class combinations on try. There are classes in this game I've never used in my life and I'm really pumped to use them. Oh, right, adaptability negotiation. There's aptitude and teamwork. These are things that dictate what quests you can take. I believe your starting values on this are determined by uh, what you answered at the quiz at the beginning of the game. Okay, ability points is just AP from the previous game where it gets you different abilities um, depending on whatever weapons you're wielding. But we'll be going over that again soon. So yeah, the map in this one is different. It's a really cool twist on the map. Right now we're just confined to this tiny little area here but it's all good. Because we're kind of in the tutorial area of the game right now. Oh God, I just had nostalgia chill <laughs> from seeing the tavern again. God, I'm pumped to play. I didn't think I was this pumped to play. Oh, that music brings back memories. Same music as the first game. I keep saying first game when technically it's not the first in the series, but I think you know what I mean. Like, this is clearly the successor to the Game Boy Advanced one, not the PlayStation one. The PlayStation one was tonally way more serious. Yeah, have you not clued in yet? You're like, you're not human or hume as you say. Dude, almost no one around you is human. Have you noticed there's like one other human in the room? You're gonna have to get used to this one. God damn it, game, you're making me hungry and I just had breakfast.
Hey, there's actually a good question. I don't remember from the previous game if time paused or not. I think it did when he went in the book. I actually don't remember for sure. You know, it's it, see, here's the thing about me. I actually really like these characters so far. These are fun characters. And yet, I have not enjoyed a regular series numbered Final Fantasy game since Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> there are parts of VII that I liked. There were even parts of VIII that I liked. I never played IX, and I've been told a lot of times I would probably like that. And uh, Truth be told, it probably is right up my alley. And then, um... 10 onward, I really didn't like. <laughs> so... I don't know what it is, like, something something about the off series of Final Fantasy games often really click with me, and then the main series I haven't liked since the SNES days. I don't know what it is. But these characters, I don't know, this is just fun, you know? They always gotta try and make it so dark and serious and stuff, and there are lots of dark and serious games I like, but in my Final Fantasy, I don't think I need that. You can have dark moments and you can have serious moments, but overall, I wanted to be like a journey. I wanted to be like a happy-go-lucky quest, you know? Save the world. It's fun. Yeah, you probably should ask that before you start walking up to people. Oh right, by default it's Team Gully. Well, I think I know what the fans will want me to rename it to. Whew. That's crazy, do you hear that? The audio is fucking up only on this screen, since I uh, switched over the audio processing mode. I think I'm gonna switch it to Team Man Bar. Uh, there it is, and we gotta caps lock that, of course. Hey, audio fixed itself. Yeah, we're gonna have the occasional little emulator problem. DS emulators aren't great. Now, technically, by Canadian law, this is completely 100% legal, what I'm doing, because I do actually own the cartridge of the game, because uh, this game rocks. Uh, however, for the sake of capturing this for the show, emulator's way fucking better than me shelling out a ton of money to play it on DS, just to play it on the tiny screen. I don't think you guys will mind too. I don't think the breaking point on this playthrough is gonna be uh, the occasional little sound bug. All right, so I, I believe these are all the guys that we start with on our team. Like everybody down the stairs here. These are all the people we start with. I just realized up the stairs there on the left talking to the barkeep. Is that Mont Blanc? Might be. Hmm, looks like him. He's got the jacket. Find work uh, following uh, other things. Available quests, which are called quests. Oh, right, right, right. Jobs, jobs, jobs. I wonder what they drink for refreshments in this world. Do they have alcohol? This would be the most amazing game to have completely out of place product placement. Would that, would it not be the weirdest thing if like at that moment, Sid turns to the barkeep and he's like, barkeep, get us a sweet roll of, a uh, sweet round of Corollas. Corollas? Coronas? Aren't Corollas like watches or something? I'm illiterate. I don't know why you're watching this. Right, so um, now's the time when I'd probably end the episode, but I think I want to show you a little bit more just on this first episode. 
if you're not interested in the nitty gritty of things, then uh, tune out now. Check out the description if you want to see the playlist, if you want to watch more of this. But hey, if you really want to see how the uh, behind the scenes non battle stuff works, then uh, I'll show you that here for those of you who want to stick around. So we have our uh, much nicer looking layout here. If this looks familiar to you, it is actually the same screen as the class select screen from some of the Ogre Battle games. Uh, that's exactly what it looks like. It might actually be the same company who made it. Ogre Battle games, awesome, by the way. I totally want to do a full stream through of Ogre Battle 64 one day. That game is phenomenal. Oh, and if you're watching this and you want to see me do more of these kinds of games, I also did Ogre Tactics on Game Boy Advance. Uh, which you can also find in the playlist section of my channel. And if you want to go to where I live stream, my hitbox.tv link is in the description of this video as well. Uh, but I'm rambling a lot. Let's look at our characters here. So, you can see on the touch screen there, the breakdown of our stats. We can see our experience, every 100 points is a level, of course. How many stat points you get in your different things depends on what class you are when you level up. So I'm a soldier right now with MDB, as you can see right under his name. We're looking entirely at the right screen for this, by the way. You can see his MP, uh, his health, all of that. Move and jump are dictated by equipment and dictated by class, but mostly class. You will get a few special items that can increase movement or jump. Mostly jump. Move items are rare because having extra movement per turn is pretty big. Evasion is your chance to dodge. Speed is how quickly you act in a turn and how often you act. Attack is your attack strength. Defense is your physical defense against physical attacks. Magic is your attack strength for magic attacks and spells. And resistance is your defense and resistance against uh, magic attacks. So, you know, it's the Pokemon formula. Attack, defense, special attack, special defense. You can see our equipment there, as well as our abilities. You see there's A, A, R, and P for abilities there. Well, what that translates to is uh, A and A are your two abilities that you pick. These are ability slots of either classes you've used or items. And those are actions you can take during a turn. The R is reaction. If you've learned a reactive ability, then that is something that can you can do as a reaction to something happening. For instance, uh, if you have the counter ability, then when someone takes a swing at you, you take a swing back as long as you're in a position to do it. Or counter spell, you get hit by a spell, well, you'll cast a spell back. And lastly, there's P for, I believe it stands for power up. It's kind of a general ability. It's usually something like, um, oh, your spells cost less mana. Or I think it's called magic points in this actually. Or, um, hey, you've got more health, something like that. So if we just click on our guy here, we can change equipment, set abilities, change job, sort units. So I wanna set abilities here. And it's giving me a little bit of tutorial that I'm skipping through because I've already taught you all that. Right, so we have, uh, oh, we can grab Shield Bearer that we're learning right now. So you learn these, you can see it says 150 there. We have 150 ability points, we need 300 for that. You can tell because the bar is halfway full. Once you've mastered an ability, what it means is you can equip that ability even if you're no longer that class. Shield Bearer is a very basic skill you can get early on with a basic shield with a soldier class. It just makes it so whatever class you are, if you have this ability equipped, you can wear a shield. Or carry one. We already have items, it says mastered on a bunch of things, that's just a formality really. It's just telling us that uh, we can use all the items that we have, so we have a slot taken up for that. And Arts of War, we have none. That is the class for, uh, or rather the ability set for a soldier. Soldier is a very basic class. So we can see here on our equipment on the far right there, some of these are tied to abilities. We can see this gives us defense, this gives us defense and resistance. This gives us evasion, which is dodge chance, but also it gives soldiers, warriors, and fencers the shield bearer ability. So, yeah. We're gonna wanna get him a new sword so he's learning something new, but we can also go to change job and we can see what jobs we can be. You can see that there's some hidden ones, and there's some that we just can't take right now. So if I hit help on one of these, let's do thief. Requires one mastered soldier ab action ability. So, 
That is how it works. If you want to unlock new classes, you need to have a number of different abilities unlocked for other classes. So that always gives you something to do. So your starting point with a Hume, who has no skills, is you can be a soldier or a white mage. You can always switch between them. And uh, the white mage stuff will start getting you into classes like black mage, which I believe requires one white mage spell. Yep. You can start getting into blue mage, which requires a black mage skill. Illusionist, which is four black mage, two white mage. It's a more advanced one. And uh, there are more to unlock. Humans in general don't make amazing mages, though. They do have two unique magic classes, though. Humans are the only ones who can be blue mages, who absorb abilities hit uh, that they're hit by by monsters and have the ability to then use them back, which is very useful. Uh, blue mages require a lot of micromanagement to really get working, but once you've got a lot of abilities saved up with them, they can be quite powerful. And they also become a seer, which I actually don't know a ton about. I believe it's like a powerful illusionist. An illusionist, a few people can be. It's a spellcaster that has very expensive spells that aren't very strong, but they hit every enemy on the entire map no matter where they are. Very cool advanced class. With a very good power-up ability they can get that makes it so all spells are half price. That's a great ability to pick up and then use with other magic classes. So there's a lot of mixing and matching you can do in this, do in this game that I find absolutely fascinating. So, Seers are pretty much just advanced illusionists, which is really probably the best magic class for uh, the Hume. The best pure magic class, at least. In general, you usually make Humes like um, melee classes because they've got some really good unique melee classes, which is what I'm going to do with my main character. It's what most people really do with their main characters. They usually go like half fighter, which is like a melee centric soldier who uh, he's all about doing damage and paladin, which is all about being really tanky and hard to kill. And it's a potent combo. I can see why so many people use it. But I think I'm actually going to go paladin and then an advanced kind of uh, fighter that I have not unlocked yet. I'm blanking on the name of it right now, but I've got it written down somewhere, so it's all good. So we're going to stay soldier for now with him. Next we have uh, Skothgraw here. He's a Nomu. Numu? I think it's Numu. Uh, he's a black mage at the moment. Uh, what can he pick between? He can pick between black mage and white mage. Now he's got a rod on. So he's learning Fire, Thunder, and Blizzard, and he's almost done all of them because they're cheap spells. It's very quick to learn your first three spells as a Black Mage, just because the first three basic ones all come on the same rod, just so that you've got a bit of variety in element in the beginning of the game. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with him yet, because I don't have the list in front of me, but I think I have th two or three different, like, I've got about three of every single race that I want to have on the team. Uh, to get all the combos that I really want. I want to have a big roster. Usually in these games, I've got a small focused one. This one's going to be a long running series. I want to really show you guys the variety of this. So what I'm going to do with this guy, I'm not entirely sure yet. I'll, uh, I'll figure it out between episodes. We have a, uh, oh shit. What is she called again? Vera, I believe it's called, is this race. So... Uh, they are probably comparable to Humes in general, and they're kind of jack of all tradesy, but they can do more viable magic stuff than a Hume. So it can be a Fencer, which is essentially a fast moving soldier, an Archer, get into the archery stuff, or a White Mage to get into the magic stuff. They can also be a Red Mage, which is the classic Final Fantasy Red Mage, where they are. They can do a bit of white magic, a bit of black magic, and they're decent in a, in a uh, close-up fight. Very interesting class with some good abilities. Elementalist, where you're like a fencer with some spells. Fencer is pure fighter. A lot of uh, mobility and dodge-based things. Good abilities. Sniper is like an advanced archer. We got a summoner who's got very powerful and expensive area spells. All kinds of interesting stuff. I think she might go Fencer, or maybe Archer. I gotta plan things out more. We have Bored here. He's a Benga, this is what Benga usually look like. He's a warrior right now, which is pretty much like a fighter. Uh, Benga are very melee-centric. I can become a White Monk as well, which are faster, dodgier, hard-hitting, but a little bit softer and easy to kill guys who used fist weapons. 
but we can get onto all kinds of cool classes like defenders, gladiators, bishops, templars. Templars are a cool one where you're you're um, a melee build with a few spells where you're all about killing enemy wizards and stuff. And bishop is one of their rare uh, magic centric classes where you're a holy based wizard using a lot of healing spells and offensive holy moves. It's a very interesting class for a banga to be able to do, and I think it's cool that they have that kind of variety in the game. We have another Hume there, I've already shown how that works, and lastly we have a Moogle. There are two new races in this game you haven't seen yet, Seek and another one that I'm blanking on the name of, but they don't really show up in the game until later. So we have Moogle here, he starts as a thief, which Humes can also be. Although, Humes go from thief to ninja, whereas uh, Moogles go from thief to juggler, I believe, which is a very interesting class. We're definitely having a juggler on the team. But we can have all kinds of crazy things. Moogles make great wizards, and they also make great thieves. You can get a Moogle Knight, which can actually be a pretty tanky little melee guy, which is a pretty cool class. It's kind of a mixture of a paladin and a fighter. But in general, you tend to go uh, agility, speed focus things with a Moogle with a little bit of magic. So they can be something like a Time Mage, which a new Moo can also be. A Tinkerer is a crazy build where every build you use will flip a coin and whatever it lands on, that entire team gets a negative stat effect. So hey, if you're playing on emulator and you want to cheese the game, you can save you can save scum reloading old states to really wreck the game with the tankware, but I'm not gonna cheat, because that's no fun. You can be all kinds of crazy stuff though, like an animalist. Um or animist, rather. I'm illiterate. Where you use kind of nature-based abilities, do kinds of buffs and detriments to the enemy and stuff like that. I think animist is what you need to go into for melee classes. Yes, okay. Juggler is two tinkerer. Tinkerer is two thief. Alright, you're probably staying thief then, because I wanna get a I wanna get a juggler early, because they're really wacky and fun, and I think you guys will like watching them. And he's got a jackknife, which is steel gill, I believe. Yeah, gill is what they call money in Final Fantasy games. We also have here, uh, he's already got first aid mastered from his soldier class, which is just heal yourself and remove a stat effect. Very useful. He doesn't have any precision abilities yet, although we did get that longbow. Let's actually give that to him. It's uh, a tiny bit stronger, as you can see on the right, and it also gives him the ability focus. So if we go here, uh, I actually want to check... Hmm, do I... I actually don't remember how to check what focus does. Can I click it on the touch screen? No, I can't. Okay. Well. Uh, it feels really good to get back into this game. I love this game. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just basking in this video game's awesomeness. I think we're about done. Uh, before we finish, let's just go to the pub here. Can't go to the shop yet, that's unfortunate. Ooh, didn't know a cutscene was about to start. Hmm. Hmm. All right, well, we'll end the episode here so that uh, the people who tuned out early don't miss out on anything. Thank you everybody for watching. Once again, the playlist is in the description if you want to watch more of this. So uh, thank you everybody for watching. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it. And until next time, have a nice day.